Alejandro, you can help me with that, and you're not going to die. Here, nobody dies. <laughs> That's that. And then <laughs> the other creative task, my, I say the last one, is a writing thing. It says, we have heard visions from the Valar and other folks. We have heard both kind and hostile words. The one thing that we can almost be sure that every one of them came true. So what do you have to do? Pick a course, an oath, and a prophecy. So the three of them. And then write a small comparative analysis of at least half page long. Can you find any similarities or are they individual cases? That doesn't sound like fun. Uh, it does to me actually, because if, if I had to create a board game or write an essay, I would choose to write an essay. <laughs> no, I just because I prefer writing. However, I, I know that I don't have the knowledge of Middle Earth as to make this like really meaningful. So I had to go like very, very superficial on this. It doesn't sound fun, fun uh, like at all for anybody? Let's pick one. Let's pick one of it and let's make them. <laughs> we're not going to make them. You, you can, know, we uh, can always choose the man, of course. That one's really like on top of it, of, of everything. The man, yeah, but You had that to, you had to choose one of each. A curse, an oath, and yeah, a prophecy. Which, and which write a which. Yeah, yeah, so this, I, well, let me show you what I did, right? Because why not? You can write, but we don't have much time. So I'm going to show you what I did. Uh, what did I do? Uh, this is my games. And the prancing ponies. And the cards. And this is my essay. Because <laughs> this is what I find interesting. Which, which course did you choose? I don't remember, really. But let me read this for you. <laughs> <laughs> Miss Gerald Uderang. Oh, Alejandro. You're just saying that. Okay. All of the three words, prophecy, curse, and oath, sound powerful to my ears. Nevertheless, they have a fundamental difference for me, and it's the nature of their origin. A prophecy only tells us what something will be, whether we want it or not. An oath is a pledge we can take voluntarily as we believe just. As we believe just? Well, I don't know. A curse, unlike the others, is always a burden we pose on someone else or even ourselves, whether we have earned it or not. In Middle Earth, prophecies are not as common as oaths and curses. A tragic prophecy is the prophecy of the North. I don't remember what this is, but I'm sure I'm going to read about it later. A noble oath is the one from the Men of the Mark. And an inevit inevitable curse is the one Boromir inflicted on Frodo. Yeah? What do you think about my prophecies, my oath, and my curse? Uh, uh, are you guys still there? Am I here? No? <laughs> uh, yes, yes, yes. Yeah, yeah, we're here. <laughs> ah, okay, thank you. The prophecy's origin comes from an external power, and it certainly has things in common with a curse, particularly this one. Uh, the prophecy of the North is both a curse and a prophecy. It is shown as coming from a higher power unto those who refuse to do as the Valar wished, and it ties those who fall under its conditions, leaving room from repentance. The curse it brings is inevitable and dark, as we read in the Silmarillion. What is the prophecy of the North? I don't even know. You see, I, I, I looked for a prophecy and I just wrote something about it, but I really don't know. You know, you guys know what I'm talking about? Because I don't know what I'm talking about. I think it was about uh, Aragorn becoming king again. I think that's the prophecy. No, because it talks about the Valor. I think it has more to do with when, you know, you, you had to leave or you have to come. I don't know the elf story or history or something like that. I don't know. No, but that the one you're talking about there is the Mandos course. The, Probably. The they made elves when they don't when they leave uh-huh i think uh, this i think that's what i'm talking about because that's a curse that's not a prophecy though ah, that's it's a curse uh okay i messed up the oath is singular and fair although it is connected to fatigue events 
It is true that an oath can bring remorse as a curse, but this is not the case of the oath from the men of the mark. The only thing I found remorseful in this oath is its origin. After the men of the mark had fought for Saruman, they are forced to take an oath not to damage good people again, which sets them free and allows them to see the good in the men of Rohan. Uh, Alejandro knows a lot, you see? Mandos and the Prophecy of Narnia. Uh, so this is uh, an oath that the men of the mark took to help Saruman. <laughs> you Google it. Okay. And the curse. The curse is unique in itself and it is connected to nothing else. Boromir, son of Denethor, is corrupted by the rain. And so the origin of his curse comes from his own heart. He curses Frodo to death, thinking that the Hobbit is a traitor. Interestingly, immediately afterwards, he stumbles and acts as if the curse had been for him, which no shorter, no, which no shorter after we find out is true. I like it because he curses Frodo, but the curse worked for him because he was a traitor. <laughs> may I go to the bathroom? <laughs> no, no. We're about to finish. You, you may not. You may not. We're about to finish. With these short examples, it is possible to see that the prophecy and an oath are linked to either a higher power or just to a consequence of our actions, while the curse is a display of hatred that might not even be justified. Thank you. That's the end. You see? That's it. Yeah, uh, what did you guys think? This is round one, you see, like this every month. For five months. Hard work. Yeah, it's fun, but it's hard work. <laughs> I was late for the second and the third round, and I think I didn't finish. I couldn't finish. I think you're too broad. I couldn't finish the fourth and the fifth because they, they are way out of my league. Even this. You know. Why? What, what, what do I, they I, ask? What do they ask? Ah, because you yeah. were... Lots of things. Lots of things connected to the whole Middle Earth. And Okay, you want to see round two? I'm just going to show yeah, you. Yeah, yeah, totally. Because I got to go. Scared of it. But I'm just going to show yeah. you the second round. Maybe we can meet. Yeah, this was round. difficult. The first thing was kind of difficult. So, man, come on. <laughs> but the the word puzzle was it was easy. Uh, the second. This is the second. Ah, these are my these are my answers. Now I'm gonna show you my answers. <laughs> um, two. Oh, I think I didn't save it with all my answers. Okay. Well, uh, for example, in in this one. I, what I do, what I do. Second round. Connect the names that belong to the same character. Okay. I don't know any of these people. You're kidding me. In Goldor, the meeting, these are just not even a, a Strider Aragorn anywhere. Ah, sorry, I'm not sharing the screen. <laughs> yeah, totally. No. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. The second round. Tell me which names are the same yeah. on a meeting. Who are these people? Uh, I really had to look it up. <laughs> oh, those are the names in Quenya. You see, Quenya yeah. oh, would say. Kurunfingwe, that one I've had. Yeah, fair enough. Totally. Yeah, Kurunfingwe, that's. Okay, and this that's... took me like a lot of time. Second round. Uh, another crossword, but <laughs> right. Uh, you have to find who and that is right the initials of an elven king i have no idea this this was super hard i don't know if i got it right really uncle of lalaith who is this really uh, you know this this is the stuff uh this was fun i learned a lot from this one this is uh the story of of um of you know Irendil, maybe of Irendil. But the story is mm -hmm. told incorrectly. So you have to find everything that is wrong and correct it. And I had no idea about the whole story. So I really had to look it up and everything, you know, it's uh, fun, but hard work. Yeah, that's it. 
So this is uh, what they do. Um, it, it does look hard. It does look hard. And, and they say, well, I like to follow rules, right? And they say, like, it's individual. Don't, don't do it in groups. <laughs> like, you call that fun. It is fun. I mean, Alejandro, come on. A lot of work. A lot of work to have also, fun. You know? Also, uh, <laughs> if you're a teacher, you can do only the creative part. So that's another thing. You don't have to do the quiz part, or you can only do the quiz part and, and not the. In the second round, you had to do school posters with with the different alphabets of the different races for children. <laughs> not fun. <laughs> Sounds like a lot of fun. <laughs> a lot of fun. <laughs> Uh, well, I, I found it interesting. Unfortunately I, could, unfortunately, I couldn't finish. There were like 30 people participating and definitely probably just 20 or 15 just finished because it's it's challenging. But I'm looking forward to the next edition. And I think, <laughs> I think more people should do it because, you know, it, 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 it's a way of re well for people for for normal talking fans is a way of rereading. In my case, I I've only read The Hobbit and The Lord of the Rings and some Silmarillion. Oh, I'm lost. I don't I don't know much. Like in the first questions today, the guys here actually Eric, uh, Jack, Eric, and and Francisco they knew they had an idea of what they were talking about. I didn't. I really had to look it up. But I like learning. A way to level up your English in talking stuff. Exactly. Yes, yes. I signed AM for it because it's in English. So I get to practice my English and doing researching about something I like, like talking. You see? That's Ooh, the way of learning. Absolutely. Great grade. Yes, yes. Too much knowledge. <laughs> so thank you very much for coming. Uh, I'm very grateful. Uh, it was great to have you here, and I hope to see you soon. I really have to go. I was recording. I'm going to start. <laughs>